dome house. On the this is the same guy who built the underground Quonset hut. There it is. Cool. <laughs> so should I, mm -hmm. should I put it there? Yeah. I think so. I'm put it here. Great, we got just enough light. It's perfect. Yeah, it's a good timing because the sun's going down there. What's that you guys got? What are those things? You just peel it off like this? Over and then you eat the outside. Man, I didn't know I was going to have to teach him how to do uh, the marshmallows. <laughs> so you have a dome house. Yeah, it needs to get a lot of outside work yet, but... Somebody was just selling a dome. Yeah. And as far as getting a loan on a, at a dome house or any of that stuff, is there, is it different? Well, no, because this house is completely done to, and to code. This is like an overbuilt structure. You know about domes. Like they're very super strong, extremely well built. They had to go through a major permitting process on this thing. The guy that sold it to me, I ended up getting this for a, like a super good deal, like half price. Okay. And I still didn't want to buy it because the inside was terrible. And then it was my son actually that said, Dad, this is the perfect place for you. Because it's, it's a great palette for me because the way I build stuff, I, I love curved architecture. This is a perfect canvas for me, you know? When I first came in here, there was a seven and a half foot wall straight across from there to there, but that's all it was. It was really, really just, you know, disaster. So. I build everything. I do all the physical stuff, unless I need help. But I do, once I get this canvas, is where I really love doing all that myself. You really just come in here with a, a blank canvas, and you say, okay, what do I want to do? And I literally drew this on the floor here so I could get the feel of what I really wanted to do. I, I made these out, and I'm like, no, that's too long. That's too far out. And then I eventually got to this point where the longest beam I could buy was 24 feet, okay? So from here to that back of that beam is 24 feet. So I decided that that would be my radius. I would go with this beam and everything would graduate back according to the wall and it would step back according to the step back of the wall. So that's how I got that curve uh, decision on how much to hang over, right? So this is all new here with the spiral staircase and all that. It wasn't really functional. So I put that curve in there, that six foot, it's a six foot radius, that wall right there. It's a serpent wall. So right from this point of this stairs, I did the circle. And then that's how that circle wall ended up being exactly six foot radius. And then it c comes into a different sp uh, spin on it. It reverses direction and curves that way. And these doors are actually built with a curve on them as well. So they, they kind of follow the wall. It's a slight curve. It's not a 100% curve, what it is. It's got a five degree angle cut in there and these doors will put back together. Because I tried hanging them when they're straight, but it wouldn't work, it rubs on the wall. So I had to get some, some cavity behind it. So you wanted more curve. I mean, you already have a dome, but you wanted... I, I, if, you, if you ever see some of my stuff I build, I do a lot of curves. Like I, I'm always doing curve radius ceilings. I do barrel roll ceilings. I do that a lot. You guys, come on and have some water. That's all I've really got is water, coffee, or wine, which I think you'll probably go. <laughs> what it really does, a curve, the frequency of an arch structure when you're in it, there's a guy put a, a sound recorder inside the structure, a square room. And it was complete silence, but the recording was chaos because you got the 90s angles, the 90s everywhere, flat ceiling, walls. And then he went into a structure that was curved and he said it was like a symphony. That's why people love it when they come into a curved structure because they just naturally feel comfortable. 
you know, because there's something going on in there. So a dome is the, the perfect structure because it's like as nature as it gets, right? I've only ever seen two other domes about 10 years ago. I never saw it until I got back to here, you know? And the more research you do on a dome, the more you'll want one. Think of this, you know R value? This is considered R80. Most homes are like R40 or something. So this place, it costs in the coldest months, costs 80 bucks a month to, to heat for the uh, propane stove, the propane dryer, and then of course the water heater's propane. This has like an, this has an old propane stove and I just kind of like it. It's like a, it kind of looks like something from the eighties, you know, and I just left it cause I like the old fashioned yeah, thing, you know? Yeah. Is it off grid? Is that why things are on propane? I mean, yeah, it, it has solar panels in the back and it has a whole solar system that it runs off of, okay. but then you can flip flop between it. So you can have the solar on and if it ever needs extra power, it'll pull it on and the sun comes out and then it goes back on the solar. So it only costs 80 bucks a month to heat and that's in the coldest season when it's like ice outside. So it's a little warmer in here than normal, but it's because I had a fire going for about three hours now. Now in the summer, when it's 95 outside or 100 degrees, this place will stay, as long as you don't open up the windows, it'll stay about 70. So you don't even need air conditioning. So a lot of people say that round structures are difficult for furniture, that you're this wasted space. But you seem to have found ways to even have like a music nook. I don't think it's a big issue. Yeah. The nice thing about a dome is you get a lot of space at the bottom side, right? You got up to there, that kind of comes down kind of straight on the bottom. It's not that curved on the bottom. And you got some straight walls in here too. And behind all these cabinets, I mean, they, they built the interior walls that are straight. And behind the fridges, they got the curved kind of cave look in there, right? But I am actually buying, I'm getting a couch. So you can imagine that couch sitting right here. I have added this couch I had coming that I had made. I've been looking for a half round couch for like about six months. And finally I found this one. You know, and it's, it's a perfect couch. Originally, when I first moved here, it's a very odd phenomenon that happens. I was standing over here and I could hear somebody in the back corner talking, but it, it sounded like it was coming from here. It was it, just like they're talking right here, even though they're in that back corner. So what's happening is the sound rolls up over top of the ceiling and come back down and you hear it on this side. Yeah. So, cause the sound will travel like that. And instead of straight across to me from here, it'll go up here. And you'll, you'll notice that if the longer you're here, you'll notice that if I talk and you're over there, you'll hear me from over there. But now that I got the ceiling done, these walls are here. It interferes with that trajectory of the sound waves. Oh, and the bedroom has lower ceiling cause of the upstairs. Yeah, this is, this is where I built that, the kind of like the offices upstairs uh -huh. now, right? I built this way a lot. I built stuff with exposed beams and finished. I love this look. The final look is the tongue and groove. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, I think it's cheaper to build this way because it's already finished. You can see that this particular sawmill has a big band. It's a, it's a big saw blade. Mm -hmm. It's not a band saw. It's a saw blade. So you can see the marks in there. And I wanted to have that saw blade look in there because I wanted that rustic feel, you know? And then if you can see, these beams actually don't go into the dome. They actually are hanging on bolts that go through the dome walls. That's what sucked in there to hold that to the wall. So that's all stable, like super strong, sheer strength. Like that thing will take 10,000 pounds. And then obviously the wall itself is the supporting wall for the other side. And then of course, once the whole thing gets nailed in and tied together, this thing, it can't move. You know, because there's so much going on, right? So, and then you have in the back, you get like a little library. Yeah, well, this is actually the entrance into the master bathroom. But okay. I'm actually renovating this. Part of my renovation is to remove this wall. Okay. And then this will become the whole bathroom. Uh -huh. Yeah, come on in and have a look. Okay. This was not designed very well. 
Yeah, they got this tub, which I'm gonna take out and put uh -huh. a claw foot. I'm gonna move the sink shower. I got a lot of stuff on mine wow. that's gonna happen here. Yeah. But it's, you know, you can only do one thing mm -hmm. at a time, right? Yeah. Especially when you're not hiring people, because I, I do all this stuff on my couple days a week, you know? I do all my own work. <laughs> my trade for 30 years as a carpenter, this is what I love doing. I don't ever get tired of it. Dude, come on up. Okay, right. now I'm gonna warn you, yeah. okay. the upstairs is not really finished, but okay. it's, it's underway. Right. But. So it's an open office. Yeah, this is the open office. This will yeah. always be like this. Yeah. yeah. So now what'll happen here, these doors will access eventually will access the other bedroom here. Okay. So did you want this kind of balcony? Was it important to you that you could be like perched over the downstairs? Yeah, yeah. I like the cantilever over just for design because when you look up from below, you see all those beams coming off. And I definitely wanted to have the access to be able to stand up here and look down and see, see the living room down there. So it's kind of fun, you know, you can see people down there. It's like any house with a balcony, an yeah. upper floor yeah. looking down. And then that bedroom over there right. will be quite private. Yeah, this was a little tricky because it's so close to this wall, right? Oh, yeah. So I, I couldn't slide that door that way. Yeah. So this is how this will eventually work, okay? Is it'll go like this. That's how it's gonna be eventually, okay? Uh -huh. So it's a sliding and opening door. Yeah, it, it opens out of the way. Yeah. So you can have it like that, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then when, you, when someone's ready to go to bed or whatever they want to do, then they just pull this like this and then slide it over. So there'll be a handle on here and then this will open up like this eventually, okay. yeah. you know? Now, now close it shut. There's a lot of tweaking to do on this thing, but it's, it's just an idea I came up with because I didn't know how to make this door work because you can't really have a door there and try to open it because it hits the dome. So this came out uh, after a lot of thinking, how can I get a door to work on this balcony yeah. and not just put a tiny little door here? I wanted it to be broad and open. Right. So when you're up in this bedroom, you can really like, you know, get a nice view yeah. instead of feeling like a little door, you know? So yeah. this is how I come up with this little trick here. So it is interesting. Now we're really inside the dome. You really feel like you're in the roof of the dome. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. I mean, and just think about it from our feet where we're standing here, look at how much height there still is left. Right. There's a ton of height, yeah, it's really you know? Cool. Yeah. I wish I would have had that railing on here before you got here. <laughs> I won't step over. So imagine having this as the guest bedroom. So this will be all carpeted and then I'm going to have pillows around there. So it kind of acts like your own little couch in your bedroom. These solar skylights used to come into the kitchen. They have quite a few in here. There's three solar skylights in here. And then we got the division wall here, which is also curved similar to the downstairs wall. If anybody's staying here, they'll have their own bathroom up here too. They can have their own access. Yeah. This place has been, been a construction zone for like a year. Wow. So this is the utility room back here, wow. okay? okay? So this whole system runs the floor heat and this is an on-demand heater and this takes care of everything. This is the, the only one that's hot in this whole right now is this one, it's not even warm actually. But at night, this will run this little pump and it circulates that hot water through the floor. This is the washer, that's the dryer, it runs up propane. So it really doesn't cost a lot because the only thing that generally uses a lot of power is a dryer. And then here's the solar system right here. This is the power bank. Batteries there, and there's another big giant battery bank there behind that one. This will run the whole house and actually ran the whole house for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. But I'll show you the other way through the house. Mm -hmm. This comes through the walk-through closet, okay? okay into the bedroom now. Oh, so this will still, this will remain a walk-in closet. Yeah, this is, this oh, is yeah. the walk-in closet, yeah. 
Now, I was going to tell you something funny. I, I was doing the texture on the walls. And I'm like, that kind of looks like a tree. And I thought, I'm going to try doing a palm tree. The only reason I'm telling you that story mainly is because you're going to ask me, why did I paint the wall like that? Well, my daughter was five years old and I'm doing, I'm like, Athena, do whatever you want. And she made almost the exact same palm tree. It's nice because the house is like, it's not conventional. So you just going with yeah. anything, right? The walls are what you want them to be. It's right. Sure, you go right ahead, yeah. That's the one. You don't use that other door though. Cause that, that's just been temporary. Oh, yeah. I literally just put that on like last week. So, but I kept the old door for now until I get it all set up. Yeah. And I like the energy that comes off the fire. I can mention I used to live in the wilderness up on a lake in Canada. So I literally heated my house with a wood stove all the time. I was totally off grid. And that's actually where I learned, started learning my building trade was there. So I built my first cabin and I started learning my, my trade. And then I ended up building cabins for people out there about three years later. I was building a bunch of cabins out there for people. Nice. So now you're in a dome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this section here is going to be a renovation I do when I'm done the outside. I'm going to take that roof and it's going to become a concrete similar design as that, except it will be cur rolled curved like an eyebrow. So you're going to look at it, it's going to look like a part of this system. And that's the only reason I didn't really want to buy this place because it didn't have a shop. And I thought, well, I can just build one, you know? Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> so, a builder, so you can build what you need, right? I can do it. It's just, it's, everything takes time. So you're like a little, I'm a little impatient. So I'm like, oh, really? I want it now. Yeah. When I got the place, yeah. this was all forested up here. I mean, a lot of spindly trees like that. Yeah. So it was really kind of not very nice. And you can see that I actually literally took all that and piled that last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So eventually this will get all cleared because this, this property goes as far as your eye can see that way. What do you want to do with the property? You want to build more or just kind of? Well, the real, the real plan I have is I want to build a hobbit town in there. I'm going to have 10 hobbit houses, undergrounds, and I'm building the way I build my undergrounds. So I already know how to do it. The insides will be clad with, with the facade of actually the architecture of from the Lord of the Rings. That's going to be something I do just for fun. It's going to take obviously about five years to do that. Wow. Okay. You can see that thing looks like uh, something out of Star Wars, you know? with all the blisters and stuff on it. So when I get to fixing this thing in the spring, I'm going to get rid of those blisters. I got a way to do it. I'm going to recoat it with a special product they have that you can get it colored. You don't have to paint it. It's like a spackle. What so the blisters? the blisters are the canvas on the outside that yeah. they blow up, right? Yeah. The, the structure. And then they spray foam it. So every once in a while, they were having a problem with the adherence of the, sh of the actual spray foam to the so wherever it didn't adhere, it creates a condens a, an area where the, it'll swell up in the condensation okay. uh, whenever there is a heat transfer thing. But the good news is below that surface is all spray foam, four to six inches. So it's a closed cell spray foam, so it doesn't leak. Okay. You won't ever get any leaking. There's not a leak in that place. Uh, okay. There's just a couple of solar tubes. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning. Those are those, those are those skylight tubes, and then they got an actual couple of real skylights, which is one up in the office and one on the other side. Uh -huh. How old is the house? Two thousand six, I believe. Okay, so it's about. So it's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is in the master bedroom where I was showing you earlier. There's actually a lot more light than I originally was like. It's gonna be kind of dark in here, but it really is not bad at all. This is, this is a lot of window compared to that other side. Yeah. It's, this is Southern Exposure? Yeah, Southern Exposure, yeah. It, it works great. I mean, I love it. I, I, I began to fall more in love with this house. The longer I live here, the more I just like, it's perfect. You know, it's just perfect for me. There's fire in there.
Let's try and break it. 